We'll now briefly take a look at the uh, structure of the pastoral epistles. We'll begin here with Titus. So in Titus, we have the uh, typical epistolatory uh, salutations in verses 1 through 4. Then um, the 5 through 9 is kind of a reminder to, for Titus to appoint elders with the kind of description of the people who ought to be appointed. Uh, there is a charge to rebuke uh, harmful leaders. Then uh, the chapter 2 is an exhortation about household behaviors, moral behaviors, breaking them up between the different uh, groups within a household, older men, older women, uh, younger men, uh, younger women, uh, and also there seems to be a, provided a theological foundation, at least a Christian theological foundation, for these ex, uh, ethical exhortations. Then uh, in chapter 3, we have an exhortation of Christians towards healthy, or that is to be sound, uh, moral behaviors, particularly with outsiders. And that's a key feature of the pastorals is Paul's ethical orientation towards, you know, his ethical instructions to Christians about how they interact with outsiders. Uh, that seems to be more important in the pastoral epistles than they are in any of the other uh, uh, Pauline epistles. Then there's an exhortation for Christians to uh, avoid divisive church leaders. And then finally, there's a uh, concluding, um, closing instructions and a greeting. The structure of 1 Timothy, again, a salutation, uh, then with warnings to avoid uh, false teachers, kind of like in Titus, you have this about dismissing or uh, staying away from uh, false teachers. Christians must behave peacefully within the household of God. Uh, so this is the way in which uh, Christians, when they come together uh, in the assembly, uh, realizing that these assemblies are very public and that they can, what goes on inside these households uh, could be heard from outsiders and um, they can observe the behaviors of Christians. Uh, they ought to be praying for the emperors, though they're not seen as people who are antagonistic towards the, the, the empire. Um, there shouldn't be arguing and quarreling. Instead, uh, people, men should be uh, praying. Women ought to be in appropriate dress. Uh, women should not be trying to exert authority over men. A controversial uh, passage there in Second Timothy and First Timothy two, uh, but should be read in light of Paul's overall concern with false teachers. Uh, Christian leaders need to be an example of good conduct. Uh, so again, the kind of the um, qualities for those who are going to be the overseers uh, or the elders of the congregation, and uh, those who are going to be the deacons, the kind of the official servants uh, in the in the church. Uh, there's also a reason, a theological reasons for encouraging good conduct, and the purpose for the the letter is also kind of stated in that section. Timothy is to be a teacher that instructs in in godliness. Uh, there are proper behavior for groups within the household of God, in particular, again, the, uh, the way uh, elders ought to be treated and when elders are not doing what they should do, how Timothy is going to kind of hold court over them. There's also instructions about widows and which widows can be uh, en enrolled or enlisted uh, on, on the role to be taken care of. Uh, but again, the proper behavior that is expected of those who are going to receive financial benefit from the church whether they are the widows, whether they are te uh, teachers. Um, so um, both old and young are addressed. The widows, I've said, elders, um, even slaves are addressed here, um, particularly in the situation where there may be some slaves who are owned by uh, Christian uh, masters. Uh, and uh, what happens when they, are, um, they work or service to a non-Christian? Uh, then Timothy must confront and se uh, separate himself from heretical, greedy teachers. Uh, then he's got to, Timothy has to confront those who are put their hopes in riches. And so this is a kind of a unique area um, for um, Paul, where Paul tends to address particularly um, the issues associated with the wealthy as a group. And some instructions are given here about the wealthy that Paul doesn't really lay out 
in any of his other letters, and it's kind of surprising when these other places that Paul wrote to, there most likely would have been wealthy people, but here uh, some instructions about not being greedy and making sure that the, the wealthy are, are generous and not putting their hope or trust uh, in their wealth. And then finally there's uh, closing instructions and greetings. And the structure of 2 Timothy, again the salutation. Uh, Timothy uh, is encouraged to be kind of courageous and commit to the gospel. In some way, 2 Timothy seems like a kind of a last will and testament. Paul is in prison and uh, he's wanting to encourage Timothy. So he gives these kind of final instructions to his young representative of how a good minister ought to act. So uh, the encouragements for commitment, uh, the idea that Timothy has to show determination, endurance because of the existence of false teachers, um, but he can't be divisive. Uh, he can't be like these teachers of heresies. Um, he warns them that ungodliness will cre increase in the church, that this is part of the signs that they are living in the, in the last time. Uh, Timothy must also continue to follow the teachings and examples of Paul. Uh, and um, in particular, there's some instructions here about the reading of scriptures and because of the value of scriptures uh, to edifying the church and instructing the church. Then there's a closing section with final charges to Timothy to preach the truth. He describes his, his situation and he wants Timothy as well as some others to come visit, visit him. And then the final kind of greetings and, and final appeals. And that's the general structure of 2 Timothy.